Hi everyone, and welcome to AI Insider. Today, we've got some amazing updates for you in the world of AI models and comfy UI. Let's dive right into it, because there's some groundbreaking stuff you won't want to miss. First up, what are Flux Dev Tools? Think of them as a Swiss army knife for image manipulation, designed to enhance the capabilities of your text-to-image models. They empower you to modify, expand, and transform images with precision and control. Starting with Fluxfill, this tool is your go-to for inpainting and outpainting. It's perfect for making seamless edits or extending images beyond their original borders. Moving on to Flux Depth and Flux Canny, these models focus on structural guidance. They're designed to maintain the integrity of the original image while allowing for text-guided edits. Depth models use depth maps to bring a sense of realism to your changes, while canny models rely on edge detection to preserve composition. And then there's Flux Redux, the ultimate tool for image variation. This adapter lets you remix your images while staying true to their original style. By combining an input image with a text prompt, you can create anything from subtle tweaks to dramatic transformations. But what if you could combine all these amazing tools into a single workflow? That's exactly what I've done with my custom Flux tools all in one workflow in Comfy UI. There are two versions of this workflow available to suit your needs. The first uses the normal Flux models, which you can download directly from the Black Forest Lab's main Flux Dev Tools page. While working on this video, I discovered that quantized GUF models are now available. These are perfect for users with low VRAM, allowing you to run the GUF version smoothly without compromising too much on quality. I'll also provide all the links you need in the description below where to download these models and detailed instructions on where to place them in your comfy UI folder for seamless integration. As you'll see during the demonstration, this workflow might look a bit messy, with wires running all over the place. Don't worry, the version you'll be downloading has been fully optimized and cleaned up for a much smoother and more organized experience. Let's start with outpainting. In this group, I'm using the Flux One Fill Dev FP8 model, which you can download from the description below. Place it in the models slash unit folder. Alongside it, I'm using the Clip L T 5X XL FP8 and the Flux VAE models. Here's how the workflow operates. First, load your image and enter a prompt describing the entire scene you want to create. Use the image resize node to adjust your input image to 800 by 800 pixels. Then, apply the Pad Image for Outpainting node to determine how many pixels you want to add. For instance, if you want a final canvas size of 1920 by 1080, for example, 1920 minus 800 for width, 1080 minus 800 for height. This gives you precise pixel values to extend your canvas. Next, set the Flux Guidance to 30 and generate the image with 30 steps. As you can see, the result is a beautifully extended canvas sized at 1920 by 1080. While there might be slight color mismatches, these can be easily corrected in Photoshop or any editing software. One critical tip, always use the Image Composite Masked node during outpainting and inpainting. This is essential because VAE encoding and decoding aren't lossless processes. Each time you encode and decode, the image degrades slightly. By inpainting only the changes you need and pasting them back onto the original pixels, you maintain the quality of your work. Let's move on to inpainting with Flux Fill. As always, Remember to disable all other groups before enabling the one you want to work with. For this example, I'm using an image from my last virtual try-on video on Comfy UI. You can check it out after this video. To begin, mask the area you want to modify. Enter a simple positive prompt that describes only the changes you want within the masked area. For instance, I set the prompt to a white t-shirt under a black puff jacket. Once generated, 
you'll see the newly edited area blending seamlessly into the original image. To maintain quality, we'll use the Image Composite Mask node again. This pastes the in-painted area back onto the original image, ensuring that no detail or quality is lost during the VAE process. As you can see, the result is clean and consistent, making Flux feel perfect for tasks like virtual try-ons or subtle alterations to existing images. Now, let's jump into the Canny workflow. Canny focuses on edge detection, which is fantastic for preserving the structural integrity of an image during edits. For this workflow, we're using the Flux Canny model. While you can use Canny in depth LoRa's with the regular Flux model, I'll demonstrate using the full Flux Canny model for this example. Make sure to download the model from the link in the description and place it in the models slash unit folder. The setup is straightforward. Start with an input image. Use the Canny Edge preprocessor to detect the edges of the image. Add a positive prompt and generate the image. The result maintains the original image's composition while applying the desired changes. Although the quality here isn't perfect, but it's a good foundation. I'll be testing it with LoRa's in future videos to improve results further. Stay tuned for updates on that, either here or on my Discord channel. Now onto the depth workflow. The Flux Depth model is another standout tool. While it works perfectly with just a LoRa if you're limited on storage space, I'll demonstrate using the full model. Depth-based editing is invaluable for preserving the structure of an image, especially for tasks like maintaining character poses or adding depth-aware adjustments. The results speak for themselves. It's an incredibly versatile tool for refining character details or enhancing environmental depth. I'll be experimenting further to unlock its full potential, so stay tuned for more updates. As we discussed earlier, Flux Redux allows you to remix your images while staying true to their original style. To get started, you'll need a reference image for the style, Google's Siglip Clip Vision model, which you can download from the link below and place in the models slash clip vision folder. The Flux Redux model, placed in the models slash style models folder. For this demo, I use the regular Flux FP8 model, but you can also opt for GUF quantized models if you're working with a low VRAM GPU. Additionally, I incorporated a custom LoRa I trained for this example. After generating, the final image beautifully captures the essence of the reference style while offering unique variations. I really enjoyed working with this model and can't wait to explore more creative possibilities. You can test it yourself. Download links and instructions are in the description below. All right, now let's transition to something truly groundbreaking, LTX Video. LTX Video is the first DIT-based video generation model capable of producing high-quality videos in real time. Imagine generating 24 FPS videos at a resolution of 768 by 512 faster than it takes to watch them. This is exactly what LTX Video brings to the table. The model is trained on a large-scale dataset of diverse videos, Let's see how it works. First, a word of caution. LTX video relies on long descriptive prompts. If your prompt is too short, the output quality can suffer significantly. Now, to get started, you can either install and run LTX video via their Gradio app or directly use it in Comfy UI, which already integrates the model. If you're working with Comfy UI, ensure it's updated to the latest version. Download the LTX video model from Hugging Face and place it in the models slash checkpoints folder. For this demonstration, I'm using an RTX 3090 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM. And I must say, this model outperforms others like COG Video and Mochi in terms of speed. One of the standout features of LTX video is its image to video capability. The results are stunning and bring static images to life with dynamic animations. LTX Video also supports video-to-video -video transformation, though this feature isn't perfect yet due to the model's 2 billion parameter limitation. Despite this, 
it can still be incredibly useful for enhancing or reimagining video clips. To try this feature, load your input video, describe the transformations in your prompt, and let the model work its magic. It's an exciting area to explore, and I'm eager to see how this evolves in future updates. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Also, be sure to check out my ultimate guide to AI influencer course at pixelailabs.com. For a limited time, you'll get 40% off the course, plus free access to Canva Pro features, a deal you don't want to miss. Visit pixelailabs.com or click the link in the description below for all the details. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.